Let's come up with a power series expansion for the function ln of 1 plus x. So now the question is, how can we make a connection with our best friend and the ln of 1 plus x? Notice that if you differentiate this function, we end up with 1 over 1 plus x, which is very similar to our best friend. So now let's reverse the process. Let's come up with a power series for 1 over 1 plus x first and integrate that. So we end up with that. So let's go ahead and do that. 1 over 1 plus x. And to get a power series for this, we look at the plus x as minus minus x. So we have 1 over 1 minus negative x. And I will show you guys the expanded version as well. And to get this, I will just plug in negative x into all this x right here. We have the 1 first, negative x into here, we have plus negative x, so that's minus x. Plugging negative x into this x, so it's like negative x in the parentheses, square, we end up with positive x squared. Plugging negative x into this x, negative x in the parentheses, to the third power, we have minus x to the third power, and so on. All right, and to get a sigma notation version, we just plug in negative x into this x. So we write down the sigma when n goes from 0 to infinity, and then we will pretty much have negative x in the parentheses to the n power. It's equivalent to say negative 1 to the nth power x to the nth power. Okay? This is just like negative x and then rest of the n power. All right, now let's integrate 1 over 1 plus x. And I will put a dx to be more, you know, more legit. Integrating this, we get ln of 1 plus x. Because technically, we have to use a u substitution. u is equal to 1 plus x. But du, the derivative of this 1 plus x is just 1. So du is the same as dx. So we have just ln of 1 plus x. And I'm not going to look at this version because this is just kind of help me out setting up with this. I will look at the expanded version and integrate that. So integrate all this. And as usual, whenever we do um, you know, integral, there's always a plus c. But for power series, we put down the plus c first. So I put down c plus the result of this. All right, integral of 1 is just x. Integrating negative x, we get minus 1 half x squared. Integrating that, we get plus 1 third x to the third power, integrating that we get minus 1 over 4, x to the fourth power, and so on. And let's look at the sigma notation version of uh, this version. Integrating this. As you can see, um, we, we still have to first put on a plus c, so I put on c plus, and then this is just a number, this is the function part, x to n power, so I just have to work with this. So this is x to n, I have to add 1 to the exponent, and then divide it by the new exponent. That's the reversed power rule. And then we don't lose any terms when we integrate, like this right here. We don't lose any terms. So we still we will have the sigma starting when n is equal to 0 up to infinity, and this is just negative 1 to the nth power x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. Just like that. And now a small question is that what should c equal to, right? And to do that, and by the way, there's one small thing I've, it's worthwhile for me to point this out. Technically, I should also put on a plus c right here as c plus with this function because whenever we end up with a, when whenever we integrate, we should always have a plus c. But then this c1 and this it should be like c2 these two c may be different. And when you subtract c1 here on both sides, we get c2 minus c1, which is c3, which is just another constant. So it doesn't really matter. I can just erase this, erase that, and just worry about you know, a c on the right-hand side, on the right-hand equation. Just like when we solve differential equation, same thing. Anyways, I will just choose a value, let's say x is equal to zero, plug into the left-hand side, and plug into the right hand side so I can solve for the c value. Here we end up with ln of 1 plus 0, and then here we have just c plus 0 minus 
zero plus zero and so on, bunch of zero, right? But then what's ln of one plus zero? That's ln of one, which is also equal to zero. And then on the right hand side, we have c plus bunch of zero, therefore c is equal to zero. And then technically, I will also do the same right here. C, I just don't know what C is, plus by plugging 0 into all the x here, we end up with 0. And then I should also match with that C is equal to 0. Okay, same thing. So therefore, we know that ln x is equal to just this, or just that. So I'll write this down. ln x, ln of 1 plus x is x minus I will just put this down as, let's say, x squared over 2 plus x to the third power over 3 minus x to the fourth power over 4, and so on. And you pretty much can see a pattern. This starts with x to the first power divided by 1 minus x to the second power divided by 2 plus x to the third power divided by 3 minus x to the fourth power divided by 4. It's alternating and then you have all the powers and then divided by that power. And I'll also write down the contents version for you guys. This is sigma when n goes from 0 to infinity. Negative 1 to the nth power x to m plus 1 over n plus 1. And this right here is the form for the ln of 1 plus x. And then just to talk about the radius of convergence. Earlier, as you can see, I used our best friend right here, from here to here. So this line will tell us the radius of convergence is equal to 1, because it stays the same, just by the right substitution. And then after we integrate this, the radius of convergence will stay the same as well. But then, in this particular situation, Whenever we integrate or whenever we differentiate, we always have to check for the convergence at the end points. Um, in this case, I will also just mention it. Uh, the interval convergence right here, uh, it's actually far from zero. I'm talking about the ln of 1 plus x. We still go to the left one unit, so we have negative 1, and we have the right you know, one unit. But then, we do not include the left endpoint, we include the right endpoint. When we have x is equal to 1, this actually converges. If you're plugging x is equal to 1, we will get an alternating series, and that's a convergent alternating series. So that's why it converges when x is equal to 1. Okay, so I just want to mention this real quick. Interval convergence for this, it's from negative 1 to 1, not including the negative 1, but we do include the 1. For this right here, the 1 over 1 plus x is still the same as that. So check for convergence at the end points whenever we integrate or differentiate. That's the key. That's it.